Biomechanical gait analysis has become very popular in the past, let's say, 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. And what advantage does the implementation of the ramp here in the lab provide you in the context of gait analysis? When we look outside the world, it's not just flat. We go up and downhill. Um, for a healthy person, that might not be a very difficult task. However, if you um, suffer from a disorder, this becomes a challenging task. We actually take the level gait and, and put a more difficult situation on, on the musculoskeletal system. And the steeper it gets, of course, this difficulty increases quite a bit. Um, so we might be able, with walking up and downhill on the slope, to actually detect deficits that we do not see in level gate, mm -hmm. they might be seeable when we go up and down the ramp. Welcome to the first episode of Motion Capture Lab Talks, today from Salzburg, Austria. It's an honor to have an outstanding scientist. She is using motion capture in the context of biomechanics of joint loading. She's using a very special and unique setup in the Motion Capture Laboratory for her research. She is supporting and guiding the further development of the ISBS community. And last but not least, she's a very likable and inspiring person to be with. It's always a pleasure and a lot of fun. Gerda Strutzenberger. Hello. Thank you very much for having us here in Salzburg in the laboratory of the Department of Sports and Exercise Science of the University of Salzburg. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Thanks for coming and taking the time. Um, Gerda, I have to start with a personal question. How long do we know each other actually? I think it is 2006. That was when you hosted the um, ISBS conference together with Hermann here in Salzburg. And mm -hmm. I had my first International Congress presentation back then. I was super excited. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was 2006. <laughs> yes. And I think you were into Achilles tendon research, if I call it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah officially, I'm, I, I'm still there. Ah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But not really cool. actively. Uh, Gerda, can you give us an, a brief overview on what has happened since 2006 uh, academically in your life? Well, um, I finished my master's in 2006 here in Salzburg and then I got the opportunity to go to a research um, training as a PhD student to the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, to the KIT in Germany. Um, and I finished there my PhD 2011 under the supervision of Professor Hermann Schwammeder. Um, and by that time the biomechanics research group developed and um, a job opening came up for a senior scientist to be in charge of the biomechanics lab uh, here at this institution. And I applied for it and got that job. Um, and since 2011, I am here as senior scientist. Cool. Um, there's one exemption though. Um, I've got the opportunity to go to Cardiff for a research year to work on a research pro project together with FIFA and, and um, Gareth Irvin. Um, and I got that opportunity as well to go away for one year and then I came back and ever since then I'm, I'm here in the lab. Yeah, oh cool, it's, it's super, super amazing mm. here, the, the laboratory as well as the scenery here in Austria. You've been invited to hold keynote presentations and, and invited presentations and talks all around the globe. You've been to, I have to look that up, in the, in the US, to Japan, in France, in UK. How amazing is that? What was your favorite destination? Uh, of course, um, invited talks are always quite um, exciting and fascinating and I take a lot of preparation there, but the favorite one is a, that's a difficult question. Mm, I think um, I would say Poitiers 2016. Um, I was invited to give the Young Blood keynote for the International Society of Biomechanics there um, by Florent Collaud. And, um, that was for me so important because um, the society had a huge impact on um, the way I how I think on, on research and, and re science. And um, it helped me to motivate myself quite a bit during my PhD years. So um, now I had to give this talk there and all the people that are really important to me said they're listening to it and of course you don't want to screw up <laughs> and you actually want to uh, present something smart and, and look smart. And, um, it was quite a challenge and it was um, a, a really interesting talk for me then as well to 
think mm. about what I've done and what I can actually do for uh, with the science I am doing. I can definitely mm. tell you, you didn't screw up. <laughs> I happened to be in Portier uh, mm. for that conference and I saw the presentation. It was very good. I, I could really tell this is the ne you're taking the next step. Mm, thank you. And I remember the Congress party, uh, <laughs> which was very good. Are you still into dancing? Uh, yes, I'm still into dancing. Um, I, of course, I, I like salsa dancing. <coughs> Do not as much as uh, I, I want to, to go out in the evening and dance. I also um, teach folk dance classes, so mm -hmm. it's still part of my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we are visiting you here in Salzburg just before you are leaving to Canada for two months. Mm -hmm. So what exactly are you doing in Canada? Well, that's also a very exciting opportunity. Um, I got the research uh, grant, a mobility grant from the ISBS Society to look into a project that's called 2D markerless tracking of video-based motion capture data. So. Actually, this will be about learning new technologies, um, see how we will progress in the future. And um, I will be able to do that with um, Scott Selby from C-Motion and um, Professor Kevin DeLuce from Queen's, Queen's University at Kingston. Um, so this will be very interesting to see what, what new technology can bring and help uh, us to understand the research questions we are asking. And um, hopefully I will also be involved in a project with Dynamic X-Ray, um, looking into the bone movement of a population that is affected by knee joint osteoarthritis. So this will be also another interesting way to look at things. A lot of things have happened since 2006, um, as we just heard. But whatever happened, you've been um, super loyal to the ISBS, International Society of Biomechanics and Sports Community, is that right? <laughs> yes, it's absolutely true. Um, the ISPS Society has definitely made a huge impact on my research and on the way I think. Um, it allowed me to establish an international research network. Um, it uh, allowed me to actually go to many different places, talk to many people, see how um, other places do things and, and uh, approach their research questions. And of course, going to the conferences always was a huge motivation um, to present your own work, um, to actually think over your own work, what is the key message you want to transfer. The society itself is very supportive in a way that they actually uh, give criticism in a way that you can develop further on. Um, mm -hmm. So I always thought it's, it's a very good conference to go to and it for myself, it helped me quite a lot and supported me quite a lot. So I actually have to thank uh, Professor Hermann Schwammmeter again for that because he brought me into that society when he hosted the conference in 2006, as mm -hmm. we mentioned already. Um, and I was a member of the organizing team um, and around like all the organizational aspects in the back. And so I got introduced into that society and um, I was fascinated by the people. And also that more than five people do biomechanics and suddenly you had this big international society um, actually working at the same things you do. That was really um, interesting and, and, and motivating for myself. Mm. After my PhD, I got awarded the Hans Gross New Investigator Award um, from that society. And I continued then on to work at the board at the, as, as a board member. Um, I installed with the board's team the member mentor program uh, for the students so they can actually be mentored during the conference by a, a senior scientist which now runs really successfully. I went on to become an executive board member as VP of conferences which I've been doing now I think for the last four years. Mm -hmm. So yes it has had a, a huge impact on me and yeah. Mm. And you're also now creating the future of the ISPS with future conferences. Exactly. Yeah. I really <laughs> like the ISPS um, society. It, it really motivated, inspired me to uh, follow up working in biomechanics or to stay mm. in biomechanics. It's not only because it's really interesting and it's yeah, the, 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 about the biomechanics itself, but it's also about the community, about the network, exactly. global community. Yes. And it is really mm. inspiring to meet the people. Mm. And I think the format of the ISBS conference uh, motivates people to network and to be interactive because yes. it, it, it has so much uh, it also has a focus on the social activities which exactly. I think is really mm. important to motivate yeah. people to, to, to work together. 
Very much so, I think also, and, and also people learn not to be afraid to ask questions because you can't know any, everything um, by mm. yourself, you have to col collaborate more or less. So for me it made a huge impact and I think it also does for the future generations of, of biomechanics or sport biomechanics people. Talking about your lab here, Gerda, mm -hmm. um, the lab is not only inside of the lab, it's, it's really unique, it's, it's housed in an old part of a castle <laughs> and that's very special, do you like that? Um, well, of course, the castle aspect is quite a unique aspect. I call this my queendom, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in a way, um, to be serious, uh, of course, this is a special uh, place to be. When we look outside, we have the nature, we have the mountains outside. The city Salzburg is just around the corner, um, so this is, um, from an environmental place, really, really nice to be. On the other hand side, we have this motion capture lab in here, which allows us to do the research we want and to teach um, biomechanics mm -hmm. to the students. Um, so that's a very unique setting and, and I feel myself fortunate to be here and be able to work here. Can you give us an overview on the research and teaching you are doing in this lab here? My research development was uh, developing two themes. The one theme is the sports biomechanics theme in injury and injury prevention and enhancing performance. And that's also brought on by the other team members um, of my group um, who will look into, for example, force velocity relationship um, at strength training or into development of shoe biomechanics for running. On the other hand side, we do uh, the clinical application of biomechanics to um, develop the well-being of the general population, looking into joint loading and how that affects um, disorders of the musculoskeletal system. As example, for example, uh, the amputee participants, obese participants, um, people that have uh, osteoarthritis, um, and we try to investigate the underpinning mechanisms um, with respect to joint movement and um, joint loading. As for your research, what is your overall goal that you are striving for? What, what contribution do you want to provide uh, to the scientific community? Well, that's a, a big question, <laughs> of course, what's the overall goal? Um, I think, of course, we want to understand um, the movement of either is it a sporting activity or activity of the daily living um, and, and help the either athlete or the individual person to develop or to be, um, become either better sportsman to be a sportsman um, injury free more or less mm. and also to increase the well-being of the general population. We sometimes forget when we are in our scientific surroundings, we do deal with numbers and, and, and everything around um, that actually the individual in the end is that what counts. So we actually want to make an impact at the end of the day that the individual um, has a better feeling.